thank you for having me. What I want to do is really just do a quick introduction uh, and then we're we'll getting into talking about the state of play because what I think is super important is to set the tone for where we are today. Um, we're going to talk about the state of play, talk about the market, and then we're going to do is, is, is talk about how to, how to prepare for what potentially is here, what's coming. Um, I want to challenge you in terms of redefining what wealth is. We're talking about generational wealth. And the six things I think we all need to be doing to create wealth, but not just for yourself, but for the next generation thereafter. So very quickly about myself, as I said, uh, as, as Leslie said, I've been uh, in, in, in the industry for about 13 plus years. And I'd be very fortunate to work with uh, um, uh, very you know, wealthy people in and around Europe and the UK. And one thing that I, uh, I've been able to do is, is learn how they have created that wealth and, and effectively brought that back to my community to, to uh, what I would say is enhance their, their understanding of that as well, and to hopefully bring that to us. Um, we are uh, one of the, 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 the only or very few black owned uh, financial advisory firms to be uh, directly authorized by the, by the FCA. And that's uh, for those that know the, 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 the loopholes that, uh, or, the hoops that one has to jump through with the FCA, that is, uh, we're, we're super proud of that. We wear that with a badge of honor because again, that's the highest level any wealth management firm can really achieve in the UK. Location, we're very fortunate to be here, not just here in London, Canary Wharf, but also in Namibia, Windhoek, uh, Leslie, <laughs> but uh, uh, no, good try. <laughs> uh, and that, that allows us to um, not just provide advice here in the UK, but also internationally, but also, it allows us to, what I would say, bring back old school wealth management, which means it's not just about pensions, ISAs, investments, but also going into more in depth, but for, for example, overseas, international investing, art, wine, et cetera, on the continent, and so on and so forth. Um, so, and, and again, you know, the, the areas that we, 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 we help, um, you know, creating wealth, financial freedom, um, estate planning, legacy planning, et cetera. So let's get into it. So, Introducing the world we live in today. A baby born today is expected to live to 104 years old. A 40 year old wanting to retire at 60 on 30,000 expenditure per year will spend approximately 2.15 million in retirement. And that was according to the, the um, or that was a, a, assumptions from uh, um, uh, um, 2015, 2017. The average cost to raising the child to 21 is 230,000. It's probably close to around a quarter of a million now. And we're living in a, a period of, well, high interest rates uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, um, um, high inflation. So the state of play. What I've done here is really just to highlight a few of the areas that I think that we need to be conscious of. Of course, we've got here high, in, high, in, high interest, which I'm sure we're all experiencing right now. We've got the asset bubble. And, and this is to show the, the, the effect of uh, what I would say the era of free money is over. I keep saying it to clients. The era of free money is over. What we're seeing now is cracks in the industry because of that last 10, 15 years of free money that we have just, that just been pumped into the system. And what we're, I feel we're seeing now is is potentially um, going to be, you know, 10 years of pain, you could say. The, not, the next 10 years is definitely not going to be like the last 10 years. So it's super important to make sure that you are putting your money in the right places to make sure that it's getting the best, so not just for yourself, but also for your future goals and objectives. And then lastly, of course, for the next generation thereafter. Mortgage rates, of course. Um, it, I always find it uh, interesting when, when, I, when I see people talk about interest rates or, or mortgage rates and how uh, high they are. But actually, when I speak to my parents, they, uh, they laugh and say, really, this is, this, is, this is still very low in comparison to what they saw in the 80s. Okay? But, in, but regardless, what we are experiencing is that um, this is really changing people's habits this is really changing Pe young people especially i would say people under 35 have experienced this type of high inflation high interest environment what they'd seen over the last again 15 years over their working period so far has just been the period of free money easy money 
So the problem what I, ha I have seen, unfortunately, is that in, in a way, 08, 09, all over again, which is that sort of element of greed and buying assets, leverage themselves up to the hilt. And now with interest rates changing, unfortunately, un uh, unable to afford what they have and, and manage those sort of quote unquote debt that they currently have right now. And then, of course, changing of the or ch changing of the guard, you could say, new world order in the, in, in the sense of India, Russia and China coming together. And maybe what does that what does that look like in terms of the markets moving away from the U.S.? Uh, and that sort of that U.S. power, the dollar, the dollar power effectively to maybe a, I don't know, a, a yuan power, a Chinese sort of dominance or world dominance. These are all things that we have to be taken into consideration when we think about planning, investing and getting our money working, not just for ourselves, but for the next generation as well. So what should we do and how should we be preparing for this? And I think there's two key questions I always ask people when we sit down with them is, what are you doing this for? And who are you doing this for? Because I believe that these two questions should be fundamental to everything that you do in terms of the way you invest. I always, I always uh, um, um, talk about the Jewish community and I love the mindset of the Jewish community, which is it's not for them, it's for the next generation. Their mindset, their way that they invest, the way that they think, it's not for them. It's all about the next generation and how the generation after them, their kids, can benefit from their estates. And I always believe that if we need to be thinking, I think I talked about this at the gift box when I, when I stood up and said, it's not for you. It's not for you. It's for them. And if every generation is thinking it's not for, it's not for them, it's for the next generation, then as a community, we will we we will we will catch up. I would say to that sort of that that eighty meters, you know, that eighty meters that we're behind. Everybody knows that saying: we're eighty meters behind in a hundred meter race. If we always had that mindset of it's not for us, what are we doing for the next generation? How are we allowing the next generation to benefit from what we're doing here today? And what are we doing the right things? Then I believe we'll make that we'll we'll, we'll catch up. Let's talk about uh, redefining wealth. So what I want to do is just dispel some myths because um, I, for me, I think sometimes when people think about wealth, they think of it in the wrong way. So I do believe there is a difference between rich and wealthy. Rich is about having money. Wealth is about having time. Rich dad, poor dad, for those that, 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 that want to read. That's that, that, that's that saying from there. And I, I believe that's such a powerful statement because actually wealth is, time is the only commodity we cannot get back. Really what we should all be aiming for, and I believe this, is that we should be aiming to, to grow wealth in a way that gives us the time to do the things we want to do rather than things we have to do. What I love sometimes about the wealthy people is that what they do is they, they've created wealth, they've created the ability to give their children the time to explore and do the things that they want to do, which in theory then allows them to, for example, create a company do you know start up a business which gives them that time to allow them to do these things so i think sometimes it's about changing our mindset about about how or redefining what wealth is or the definition of wealth, of wealth and then the second thing real wealth is not created over time overnight but rather over time a, a, a famous saying is investing should be like watching paint dry or watching the grass grow if you want excitement go to, to go to go, go to go to go to go to casino and then redefining wealth and talking about three, the three key ingredients is, in my opinion. The first is the ability to make money. The second, time. If you get time, it will rather time in the market. And then third, the most important, in my opinion, is compound interest, the eighth wonder of the world, which we'll talk about later on. But it's not necessarily how much you get paid, but rather what you do with it, which determines how quickly you build wealth. So let's give an example. The cost of delay, I call this. So Daisy here, Daisy's saving 200 pounds per month. She decided that she wanted to save it over the next 40 years. She started at 25, 200 pounds a month, assuming a growth rate of 5%, okay, which is very conservative. At the age of 65, Daisy has invested 96,000 pounds. But because of that growth rate, and because of the compounding of the money, the interest, that 96,000 pounds is now 
compounded up by a further 210,476 means her total pot, it doesn't have to be a pension, the total pot size now is 306,476. Whereas Ken, unfortunately, uh, um, sometimes us men are, 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 are big procrastinators. Um, at the age of 45, he decided he wanted to be smart and say, okay, I'm going to catch up with what Daisy's doing. So if I'm going to do 400 pounds a month and, and still get out at the same time of 65, but unfortunately, so 20, 20 years, 45, 400 pounds a month, he still invested the same amount, 96,000. But because of the lack of time to allow the money to compound, Unfortunately, his pot size is now only 69,000 in terms of growth. So his pot size is, is, is 165,000 uh, and 99. Um, and that is just showing the power again of compound interest and actually showing the power of, of getting your money working from the, from the start, from early. And, and, and for me, I'm hoping that what you're getting from this is, or, or the challenge is, what is your money doing? Is your money working for you? Or is it just sitting around doing nothing in bank accounts, getting no interest or getting nothing from it? Let's talk about generational wealth. So um, uh, defining generational wealth, just for those that don't know what it is, generational wealth or also called family wealth, multi-generational wealth or legacy wealth is wealth that's passed down from one generation to another. You build generational wealth by acquiring generational assets that you can leave to your heirs. Sounds very simple. But it's the, I, I would challenge people because when, when I was younger, my parents were, were, were building wealth. It was, it was exactly that, you know, just how much you built, which determined how quickly you built generational wealth. But now with all the taxes changing, the rules changing, it's not how much you leave what determines, uh, uh, sorry, it's not how much you leave what, what you leave uh, to your loved ones, which now determines how quickly you build generational wealth. Let me say that again, sorry. It's not, it's not, it, it, your assets could be hindering rather than helping if you pass down the wrong type of assets. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. And it's just an example. Again, please, by any stretch of imagination, please do not feel that I'm, I'm against property in any way. But I'm just going to use it as an example because actually in our community, we are a big fan of property and assets such as that. So I just want to give an example of a buy-to-let property. Buy-to-let property, now because of the rule changes, 20 to 25% deposits, typically, plus a stamp duty, stamp duty land tax of up to 3%. Um, on, the, on the monthly basis, you're now taxed on the income that you draw down on up to 45%, depending on how much you earn, okay? Because it's now classed as income. And then on the way out, if you sell it, capital gains tax, or if you pass it down to the next generation, inheritance tax versus a pension on 20, 40 or 45%, depending on how much you earn in terms of what your tax bracket is, free from the, from the government on every pound you put into the pension. 0% tax, so it grows in the tax free environment, accessible from age 55. You can take 25% of, uh, of, of the pot can be taken tax free. Now, because of the rules, it's capped at, uh, at uh, approximately 260 four thousand pounds and in some cases this can be passed down inheritance tax free or zero percent now again what i'm not trying to say to everybody is is that you part, put everything into proper uh, into pensions and you don't use or you don't utilize property but what i am saying is that when we start to think about how are we passing the wealth down or what are we actually building who are we creating this for then we need to start thinking about also when it comes to passing the wealth down to the next generation, are we creating a tax problem for them? Or actually are we helping them to, 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 to create generational wealth and, and therefore build even more on top of that? Talking about the six things that, that the wealthy do well, and I think the six key areas that thing that we need to be doing in order to create wealth, to create wealth over the long term. We talked about it a little bit earlier, compound interest, the eighth one of the world. And this was not my statement, this was Albert Einstein. The question really is, is your money working hard, hard enough for you? Is it working whilst you're not working? Is it working whilst you're sleeping? 
the second area that I believe we need to be looking at or need to be doing is is protection, protecting your protecting your income, your backup fund. Typically in our community, we are one paycheck away from being broke. How many of us have that backup fund in place? That if the boiler breaks, for example, and now not going to credit cards, if, for example, we lose our job, unfortunately, we're coming to a period where we're coming to a recessionary period, where there's going to be, unfortunately, be a few people that will lose their job. How many of you have got some funds to, to survive three to six months whilst you're looking for another job? Or again, are we going into debt? Protecting oneself. You are the most important person in the plan. How many of you have protection, whether that be critical illness, income protection? How many of you have protected yourself, protected your livelihoods? And then lastly, protecting your family. Two things are guaranteed in life, taxes and death. Ensure the latter because it's going to happen. How many of you have protect, got protection, life insurance in place? One of the most easiest ways to, in theory, create generational wealth because it passes down, providing you rapid, of course, and trusts and, uh, and, 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 and the appropriate structures. It passes down tax-free. We are very fortunate to have an office in Namibia. And, and uh, for those that, that, that know Namibia, Namibia is, is sort of uh, years behind uh, other, other countries in terms of uh, um, growth and, 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 uh, and, and prosperity. But the beautiful thing about being there is that you get to see sort of wealth in its core form. And what we see a lot of over there is the three key areas, the three, the three, the three areas of, of wealth, which is um, land, land ownership. The second is protection or second is, sorry, pensions. Uh, and then the third is protection, whole of life protection. So really, I'm trying to say that this protection is really such a fundamental area and one of the easiest ways to pass generational wealth down if it's done in the right way. The third area is discipline. The third area of, of wealth creation discipline. The philosophy of the rich and poor is this. The rich invest their money and spend what is left. The poor spend their money and invest what is left. What are you doing when you get paid? Are you paying yourself first or are you paying everybody else? Are you paying Amazon? Are you paying the, 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 the credit cards? Of course, they have to be paid. But pay yourself first, which we'll come on to in a second. The fourth area, budgeting. Here. Basic budget for those that don't, that don't have one. And I didn't make this one up. This came from, from my so the, the, the book that I read every year, The Richest Man in Babylon. 10% of everything you earn is yours to keep. Use 20% of everything you earn to pay off any debt that you have and learn to live on 70% of your income. If you can learn to live on 70% of your income, you will always have money, always. And guess what? Once your debt is being paid, what do you do with that other 20%? Save that you'll start to see your savings soar if you start to save 30% of your income. Of course, that's a very basic version and it doesn't, it's not for everybody, but, but some people can do less and people do more. But I think for me, fundamentally, the two key areas that I believe in, the, in, in, in budgeting is first, pay yourself first, pay yourself. And then lastly, of course, learn to, learn to live on 70% of your income if you can. The fifth area that I believe everybody needs to be looking at and, and, and utilizing is strategizing and planning. Purposeful saving, we call it, sniper shooting. What's your focus, target timeline? How many of you go into a career without any sort of goals, objectives in your career? I always surprise when I speak to people and they have no goals, no objectives for their life, so to speak, their finances. What do you do with your money? The reason why I, find, I, I feel that a lot of people struggle with savings is because they've got nothing to aim for. They've got nothing to, fo they've got nothing to focus on. What are your targets? What are your goals? What are your objectives? Will it be short term? What are your objectives in the medium term? What does that long term look like? I think for me, the long term is so important. What do I mean by long term? At some point, everybody wants to stop working, right? What does that look like? I'm sorry to say, but that is the biggest pot you're ever going to have to save for. 
quick math just to give you something to work, think about. Think about how much you want. Think about when you want to stop working. Statistically speaking, one in four is living to 100. It's a plan to 100. Why? Because if you plan to 100, it sounds very morbid. You plan to 100, die at 80. What have you automatically done? Created generational wealth, right? Because you now got 20 years of income you no longer need. You're welcome. <laughs> but, you, you know, so, so you think about how much you want. Think about when you want to stop. Plan to 100 times by times what you want by the years effectively times by you know times by 12 and then times by the, 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 the amount of years you're going to be in that I say that that, that low that 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 non-earning element and that's your target that's what you're going to be aiming for that's the biggest pot anybody's anybody's got to save for yeah and then of course lastly work with an advisor regularly check these goals and objectives work with somebody that's going to be that's going to that's going to make you accountable for these goals and objectives yeah that's a shameless plug, by the way. And then lastly, um, um, for me, utilizing your allowances. So important. I always talk to people and they always have all this stuff at the top. All the juicy stuff looks good. But these right here, protection, pensions, ices. There's a reason why, I'll give you an example of a, a client I have. And I think this is super important. He's uh, um, uh, 40 years old and uh, he's already multi um so, so so he's very fortunate every year he does his pensions because he can do 4k for year free does his pensions he does his wife's pensions and he does his children's pensions why in his head he said because the government gives me free money why would i not take it it's free money the, the boring stuff are the most tax efficient stuff how many of us are doing this stuff, maximizing this stuff at the bottom before we start to do all the juicy stuff that, and, and the stuff that looks good at the top? Summary, focus. What are we doing this for? Who are we doing this for? Are we helping or hindering by the assets that we're passing down? Real wealth is created not overnight, but over time. Three key ingredients is money. You need to be able to earn. You need to have money to 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 get working for you. Time, forget timing, but rather time in the market. So over time, and then compound interest. Is your money working for you? Six things that we all need to be doing: compound interest, as I talked about already. Protection, protecting yourself, protecting your 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 livelihood, and of course, insurance for you know protecting your your family. Discipline budgeting, purposeful saving, and then utilizing your allowances. Last thought, final thought. Someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago from one of the, the, the most famous investors of our time, Warren Buffett. His greatest investment was what? Coca-Cola. How many years did it take to come to fruition? Approximately 25 years. Give some thoughts. Any questions? Yeah, I'll definitely open the floor up to you. That was that was a really useful presentation, Joe. I'm it. certain there must be some questions that people have um, have got. Um, can I ask? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. We can. Yes. Yeah. What I want to ask. This is very interesting. What you have said. I'm just wondering whether it wouldn't be a good idea to take it to schools so that children can learn to invest very early. I think this is a good idea. This is, watch this space, that's all I'm saying. Um, okay. um, yeah, no, but that, no, great. Um, thank you very much for that because okay. this is something that we've been thinking about. Um, and and I'm very fortunate to partner with a, a uh, some, some great, some great uh, advisors. And one of them is, um, I don't know if I should say this, but um, I don't know if he's on it. If he's not, so it's good. Um, but I know David knows him. Um, he's looking, he's creating a book, uh, for a children's book. And the aim is, is to hopefully create a, um, a program or some sort of something that we can then take along to schools and, 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 and teach the young people. Because you have to be right. That's where it starts from. Thank you. 
Yeah, and there's a there's a question in the um, the chat as well from Valerie. Mm. Yes. Can you see it or? No, sorry, I can't. Um, uh, it says, "Is it better to cap pass cash stroke pension down rather than property?" And should companies be utilising compound interest in company pensions? Do you know if this is standard? Yes. Yeah, so, so um, you, you, let me talk about the, the the pension stuff first, and then I'll come to the property. Um, so, from a pensions perspective. Um, your money should be working regardless of whether it's a company pension or it's a private pension. Your money should be working for you. Um, I'm surprised sometimes how many people have no idea what their company pension is doing because I'm sure you, if you gave me a thousand pounds today as an advisor, you'd want to know exactly what I'm doing with it. But yet, so many people are giving their companies tens of thousands a year and haven't got an idea of where it's invested, how it's working. It's crazy it's, it, 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 it really it really astounds me so yes exactly that you need to know exactly what your money is doing with your company and the question you should be asking yourself is should we be leaving it there or maybe taking a chunk out putting it somewhere else and getting it working harder remember your company pension their job is just to get you there safely their job is not necessarily to shoot the lights out second you, you talked about um pensions over property i think it's super important to, to, to understand that the rules have changed. The rules have changed from when my parents were doing property to where property is now. For a lot of people, it's not tax efficient. For a lot of people, when they run the numbers, and a lot of people don't like me running the numbers for them, but when they run the numbers for themselves, net, net, they're losing money. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case for everybody. For some people, it makes sense. Also, there are structures one can use to get to, to put your, your property in, for example, in a business, which can make it a little bit better, okay? Remember the aim of the game, people, is to save money on the way in and pay the least money physically on the way out. The way we do that is by having multiple different structures, multiple different vehicles we can draw money down on or draw income down on to give ourselves that, 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 that sort of, uh, uh, um, that income for later on. And one such structure would be a, a you know property or a property wrapped in wrapped in a business um i think there was a third question there i can't quite remember what that yeah sorry uh do you know if this no i think you answered both of them questions okay. if not um valerie put something in the chat okay there's a question from noel uh noel brown uh you spoke of creating generational wealth can you speak a bit about how trusts might assist in wealth creation so um, trusts are not for everybody, to be clear. And uh, I, um, I think trusts for me are for a very select few. Generally speaking, the aim is to try and pass the wealth down before it gets to that stage where you need a trust. What do I mean by that? For example, let's say you've got three properties and you've got three children or three, three investment property and you've got three children. I would be trying to pass the property down to each child before I, 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 you know, sort of effectively die. And one of the ways to do that is by utilizing that seven year rule. Okay. So you're allowed to effectively gift 325,000 effectively over to, to, to your children or, or to, to anybody. Uh, um, so for example, if one of the properties is, 325,000 or less, you can gift that over. And as long as you don't die within that seven year period, then effectively that's that 325 starts again. Now, this is why I say that actually trust on everything, not for everybody. And what you want to be doing is planning is actually sitting down and saying, okay, what do we have? What are our liabilities? And is a trust necessarily is necessary? Or can we do this outside of trust? And the reason why I say that is because trusts are expensive. They're not cheap. You've got somebody have to write up the trust, which is going to cost money. Then in, in a trust, you, there's still taxes to pay. Goodness, you know, the, the government, not, the, 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 they're, not that, they're not that generous. You still have to pay taxes. It's just less. So a trust is not necessarily for everybody, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so 
Um, yes, trust can be beneficial for some people, but not for everybody. I hope that answered the question. I know that hasn't directly answered the question, but I'm yeah. trying to be just general with that answer. Okay, great. Then there's uh, another question. It says, um, uh, please explain what you meant when you said every year the man did his pension, his wife's pension, and his kid's pension. I think you have yeah so yeah. so the example of my client that 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 is uh um wealthy um so because he where he is he's he's only he's capped at four thousand now it's actually raised to ten thousand but um this tax year was actually capped at four thousand that he's allowed to put into his pension so what he did is that he would put in the three thousand six hundred that that he would contribute that on a on a yearly basis the government would give him twenty five percent for free. And then he'll be able to claim another twenty five percent in this tax return. So he's saying, so from his mindset, he's basically saying, "I just got forty percent return for doing for doing nothing, zero risk." And then you got the compound element of it. And he just did the same thing for his wife and his children, i.e., a child, a, a, a child, a children's pension. And you, as a as a spouse, he can contribute to his his partner's uh, um, um, pension as well. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, yeah. And then from Valerie, um, does life expectancy of 104 years apply to the uh, BAME community as we use, we are usually more susceptible to every sickness than other ethnic groups? If not, should we be planning differently to get quicker returns? What I don't like the term is quicker returns because then it sounds like we're, we're in a casino right now. And that's what I'm trying to make sure that we're trying to avoid. Uh, 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 and and I think it's super important that, uh, and that's why I touched on wealth is created over time, not overnight. Yeah. Yeah. Because in our community, I think there's an element of trying to get quick returns. Nothing's quick, unfortunately. Generational wealth and building generational wealth is not quick. It's taken over time, not overnight. And that's why I shared the example of a 25 year. Uh, uh, investment with with um, Daisy and and Ken etc. Because I wanted to show the element of long term investing, not just investing over a very short period of time. What I will answer to say is that I purposely plan with my clients to hundred, knowing that full well the majority of them won't live to hundred, because purposefully we are planning generational wealth. So we have the mindset of, yes, we plan to 100. I'm not going to need that money up until 100. If I do, great, we've got it there. But actually, the majority of us will not need it. So yeah. what again, what have we automatically done? We've automatically created that generational wealth because now we've got 10, 15, 20 years of money that we no longer need. So it's purposeful planning. We go, I always say that when, 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 I, when I meet my clients, we're not just, planning for you to eat we're planning for your children to eat and as far as I said if we do the right things your children's children should be eating as well right thanks very much there Jaron there's a, there's a couple more questions I'll, I'll do these quick. I'll, I'll say them all at, all at the same time Beverly asked when you talked about paying yourself you didn't mention giving an offering or charity then uh, I think you answered the next one was about property into trust and then there's another question from Norma saying, are there benefits of merging pensions? If so, what are the benefits? And then, yeah, this is very crucial. What's the cost of consultation? If someone went, you know, went to you and um, sought advice. So three quick questions. Okay, cool. So the first one is um, giving offering to charity. Uh, um, I, I, I dare not say not to give to God, right? So, so um, I, um, uh, um, you know, that comes out with your 70%, right? That's, that's the way, that's, that's my mindset. You know, learn to live on that 70%. So, so, so that comes out with your 70%. Um, benefits of, of merging pensions together. I always advise to consolidate pensions. Um, and the reason being is because ease, ease of management, administration costs and again just in terms of control um just knowing where your money is how it's invested what it's doing where you know where it's invested and, and so on and so forth so yeah for me i always advise consolidating pensions 
uh, together, if if makes sense. I also said you should have two pensions, company pension and a private pension, um, you know, uh, um, uh, as an example. We're honoured to be uh, partnering with the, the, the PCU um, and, and uh, supporting their members uh, with financial advice, wealth, wealth management, etc. cetera. Um, simply put, um, a consultation is free. Please reach out to us um, through the, the PCU website. Um, and then for those that did want to go ahead with anything, um, there is a discount because uh, for, for PCU members, there are discounts available. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Jaron. There's one more question in the um, in the in the chat, um, but I think you've answered it really. Basically, right? It's about if we don't start investing early on, then you know what recommendations do you give in terms of investment? But I think you said plan for a hundred years, and if you live less than that, then it's it's a bonus. Well, I actually. I always. I would always, I would, I would, I would add that there's, 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 there's no, you know, start, start today, you know, just because you, you, you may be delayed before there's, there's, there's no better moment like now, um, you know, start, start working, start getting stuff working for you, um, because actually something is better than nothing. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Jeremy. That was a really useful conversation.